today with Leaping Jeep. We are on Rocky Gap Trail in Nevada. We're alone with my buddy David, and uh, we really like his Suburbans. We decided to do a little walk around video. So David, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll get into Suburban. Cool. Um, my name is David Oliver. I'm the owner of Willamette Motor and Fabrication in Dallas, Texas. And uh, there we do uh, some custom fabrication, uh, small projects, uh, kind of a lot of one-off work uh, with a commercial, but really what we like doing is building uh, trucks and pro touring cars and uh, real, real special custom stuff. So, Cool, so what year is the Suburban sure. and what is your history with the truck? This is a 1985 Chevrolet Suburban and it is a one owner vehicle. So uh, my dad bought this new in 1985. I grew up in this truck. It became, uh, when I came of age and actually a little bit before that, uh, became mine when I was 14. And I have always been in love with the truck. It's always what I wanted. Um, it minus, if, you, if, if I could be forgiven the minor flirtation with the 68 Dodge Charger, but this is always the truck I wanted. I've had it since, uh, you know, since I just started driving. Took me to high school, to college, road trips. Uh, you know, we've been wheeling a lot of places. And now to SEMA. And now to SEMA. So, and the trail too. So it's been, um, the only thing left that's original is the body. And uh, other than that, we've touched every single system. Cool, you wanna tell us about the motor? Yeah. So. If you kind of look at this, just kind of the story goes from front to back. It's a 6.2 diesel. The first engine we got, we ran 300,000 miles on it, ran great, but we wanted to put a turbo on it. So we built a new engine, um, you know, some years ago and took that out of an M998 Cuck V, or M998 Hummer and Cuck V. And from like two engines, we made one. Uh, and it was pretty straightforward, a little bit of a lower compression. Uh, but you do all the same, all the normal engine building stuff when you do a diesel, you line hone it, you make sure that the crank is polished, and then we deck the heads five um, and put a little bit taller uh, head gasket on it and a little bit different pi uh, uh, piston. So we've got more room to make boost in here that, uh, that we consume now with the turbo. And so it's got an HE351 CW turbo off of 2000 something or other Cummins, and uh, it's feeding into a modified Duramax intercooler into a very highly modified front core support, and that all just kind of routes back in. So uh, what axles do you have under? Are they stock? They are not stock, no. Okay. Uh, in fact, the now the oldest component in the truck is the rear axle that we did 20 years ago. So it's a 60 in the front and a 14 in the rear, and uh, 488 Detroit's uh, 35 spline throughout on the front. And uh, just, I built that axle from like junkyard stuff. So I found a housing, I found bearing hubs and I pieced that together over about four years on the cheap just hunting in yards and finding it when you before those parts were kind of remade so that's also in there um, it's all hydro assist on the steering and uh, you know it's a it's, it's kind of like everything's a dead simple combination there's no air lockers there's no cables there's really only the 4L80 is the electronic part mm -hmm. and everything else if it, you know a Detroit locker never fails it creates challenges but it never ever fails and uh, you know, leaf springs, very, very easy. So the recipe from the truck, uh, we've just tried to kind of stick true to that. And you know, not gonna throw a 12 valve in it, not gonna throw a Duramax in it. It's all just gonna kind of be in this sort of Chevy sort of realm. Form. Yeah. yeah that's and awesome. so we've, we've kind of taken that aesthetic down through the drive line and just try to do the strongest, simplest, most easy to repair and replace sort of, sort of setup. Nice. Well, it looks like you got a worn winch. What made you decide to do the worn winch? Uh, it was very simple. We knew we were going to do Pritchett Canyon, uh -huh. and there are plenty of full-size blazers and pickups that have done uh, either with no winching or maybe a little bit of a strap, but I knew that this trip, the truck was going to be the heaviest thing by a factor of two, and uh, so, you know, self-recovery is pretty important. So when I was talking to uh, our friends at Offroad Design, uh, Stephen, he was explaining, he said, well, if you're going to run Pritchett, Go get yourself a winch, mm -hmm. and uh, that this is an off-road design bumper, and so we it all integrates smoothly, seamlessly, and easily. So, what size tires are these, and what gears do you have? So it's 488s, um, and that and 488s running 40s may seem like an odd combination for gas guys. Most people may say, "Hey, you need 513s, or you know, a set of 538s." Actually, 40s on 488s is perfect for this engine because it creates a really good highway cruise. These, these are the uh, these are a Maxxis 40 by 1350. They're the sponsored tire here for Trail to SEMA. 
and I'm coming from having a BFGs and MTRs, and uh, while those tires have served the Suburban well, these Maxis have been a, a definitive upgrade. They've, they've served the truck very, very well, and they have taken a boatload of abuse. Absolutely. Lots of sidewall. Lots of sidewall. Lot yeah. Of side wall. yeah, no, they've yeah. been really good. And, you know, they drive easy on the road. We've, I guess we've aired up and driven six times this, this trip, and so that cycling of back and forth and just hitting the highway and doing 65, 70 miles an hour, um, they don't, they don't, you know, have any complaints at all. So I've been, I've been very pleased. I'm probably going to stick in the 40, 13, 50 crowd from now on. Nice. Well, it, it fits the truck perfect. It looks really good. Ah, thanks. I, I like it. Uh, way better. You know, I had 38s and 37s before that and always felt a little weird. But these 40s are, they're, they're, they're right. This is, um, this is an aftermarket Chevy hood. And what I did is I ordered a couple of panels of louvers. Uh, drew out a design, had a guy uh, that had a, a louver die just pop them and then send me the panels. And so I took the skin uh, from here and I cut holes in it. You can see, I've documented this all very well, it's on my Instagram. But you can see that I cut these panels, put these guys in, and then you spend days just doing a couple of little, you know, stitch welding, and, uh, and then blending, and then bumping, and then putting filler. I mean, this is, this is probably 80 hours in foot, wow. just for these, just for these. And reason being is you got 114 louvers here, 57 on each side. and. Um, if you don't flow a lot of air out, it's not like the Camaros or the Corvettes, but what you do is you release hot pr uh, pressure. And the way that these cooling systems are designed is for air to pass over the radiator and then go down the trans tunnel and out the back. And it can't do that as effectively if you've got a boundary layer of pressure under the truck. These allow for that pressure to be released and for the air to flow normally. That's what these do. And they do release heat, but they're just not, they're not extractors, I guess is what I'm saying. They're not heat yeah, extractors, absolutely. they're just ventilation. And uh, this has made a real big deal. Uh, in the cooling system. It's one of those small details in the truck that I think make it, make it stand out. It looks really good. I've never seen another Suburban with hood louvers in it. It's a high effort project. I mean, I, I, it's a, uh, and I, I enjoyed it. I, I learned a lot doing it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, you know, a unique aspect of it, but Absolutely. so many hours. This whole truck is like a, it's a catalog of my fabrication life. Uh -huh. um, you can go somewhere on here and find something I did 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then you can find something I made just like, you know, a few weeks ago. So this airbox is one of the first things I made in college to uh, feed the turbo. And you know, you just get a good, nice big Duramax cotton inner, uh, cotton filter, and then just a, an airbox emulating kind of what's a, a common cold air design. And it's fed from a little hole in the radiator or in the core support here. But it's kind of hooked up to other stuff here where I've got, I, I'm, I'm big on welding stainless lately. So I've made my whole exhaust, um, you know, stainless, all the stuff is from Vibrant. They make probably the nicest stainless exhaust stuff. This intake, you know, is all me. The whole core support that you can see inside to fit and stack the coolers correctly is all me. And then you just put the factory stuff back over the top. Yep. Nice. So very the clean. Way the, the way it used to be was there used to be used to be a, the radiator, and then you would have air conditioning, and then you would have all other garbage in front like uh, oil coolers and and, and uh, that's what you put in front. So you're feeding hot engine oil cooled air onto your AC condenser, which never made sense to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, so I put the intercooler right in front of the radiator. I stacked it up basically the way that modern Duramaxes and Cummins and all that sort of deal are. And so we've got a nice, big, fat Ron Davis dual pass radiator transmission in here, uh, engine oil cooler in there. And this thing's, this is probably the largest radiator you could legitimately fit in this core support, 35, 34 by 19, three and a half wide or deep. Wow. And then right in front of that is the Duramax intercooler, which overlaps and runs from clear from one end to the other, and it occupies where the AC condenser used to be. So I had to modify the core support to allow all this uh, stuff to be seen. In front of that, you've got two derail uh, engine and trans coolers, and then in front of that, you got the AC uh, condenser from Vintage Air. Nice. Um, other stuff, little things like to get the intake path routed. Nobody makes this junk, and so you got to make it yourself. Absolutely. Um, the 6.2 is a lowly loved and highly ridiculed uh, engine platform. And it's not without some justification, but I, I, I like I like fixing things and making them work and trying to, you know, prove to myself and, and certainly to a few others that this is a platform worth worth tinkering on. So tell me about these sliders. Uh, these are about like a six and a half feet worth of uh, slider for a for a suburban. They are, admittedly, I'll tell you, these things are built far stronger than they uh, probably have to be, but. We didn't know we were going to see running Pritchett, 
And, but what we did see, we, we hit our sliders pretty good a couple of different times. It's a six by two with a lot of uh, 120 DOM going to it. And I made two separate steps uh, that also have some side body protection. And if you see the scars that are long, we've, we've used them pretty darn extensively. Yeah, absolutely. So glad we did. So it ties to the frame and also ties to the body. So there's six attach points to the overall chassis and the one on the body does have a does have a bushing. So it's uh, it's a very rigid platform. Actually adds a lot of rigidity to the truck overall. I bet it does. Back here, one of the things that we did is we wanted to move the batteries to the back of the truck. Couldn't use the spare tire well anyway, so I just plated it. And then my dad and I came up with uh, a dual battery uh, system that uses bus bar to make your connections all neat and clean and you got big 2 watt cable running to the front of the truck and so this is the box that I fabricated to keep you know whatever's in the truck from falling and either disturbing the, the, the power cables or at worst grounding and then we got a bed slide I didn't fabricate this I bought this but what a great accessory though it has been extremely handy <laughs> you could fit a full size spare 40 on it too <laughs> so we stack the 40s, we stack all of our gear on this, and to be able to pull this out and have like a workbench and load from three sides, yeah, you know, to be able to get in here and access to the front without having to crawl up and in, it's incredible. It's just so convenient. It's so convenient. Very envious of all this storage space you've got here. And it's such a multi-purpose platform that has all that room, and you did Pritchett Canyon with this. With some very good spotters. <laughs> it was very impressive. Spotters. Thank you for showing me this Suburban. It's been awesome getting to know you this week. Yeah. And seeing this on all these trails has been fantastic. This is definitely, uh, I know I'm not the only one who thinks this, this is one of the coolest rigs here. It's very unique. Um, it's the first one I've seen out here doing this kind of uh, trail and this kind of conditions and whatnot with a full size Suburban. It's, it's really incredible. Is there anything you want to promote? Oh, well, uh, you can, uh, it's, first of all, it's, it's great to wheel with y'all that are top notch wheelers. You're learning a lot from being around y'all. And uh, I, I appreciate the kind words. It's been fun to build. And I enjoy bringing it out here and, and for you guys helping me get through those trails. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, in terms of if you ever want to find out anything about uh, Willamette Motor and Fab, the truck, some of the other projects that we have in the shop, you can go to my Instagram, uh, Willamette Motor and Fab, or very easily, WillametteMotorandFab.com. W-I-L-L-O-M-E-T. Beautiful. Thanks again, brother. All right, man.